<laughs> Welcome to the Bob on Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is. Hey, Bunny. Uh, on the screen, it says uh, the Pope on Film, number 480, another Roger Corman double feature, Little Shop of Horrors and The Pit and the Pendulum. And then it says, just chatting, English movies, drugs, rock and roll. Sexy boy? Are uh, you the sexy boy? It says sexy boy, drugs, rock and roll. I'm just a bit confused. Yeah, yeah. I saw it as a keyboard. It sounded like a good one. Okay. Yeah. You don't get We're to all put about your three own things. On Twitch, as far as I know, you don't get to put in your own fucking keywords. You pick them from a list. Huh. Okay. So you're. So this podcast has always been about three things sexy boys, drugs, and rock and roll. I'm down with that. I'm okay with that. Uh, I am the Pope in question. My name is Reverend May Lynn. I am the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, which is an actual thing worth a Google. Somebody recently told me that, uh, <coughs> hey, uh, May Lynn, I'm not sure if you realize this, but you're still listed as Reverend Steve on edwood.org. Maybe you want to update that. And it's like, bitch, that's a me that website's a museum at this point. Yeah. It is something that I don't want to touch, you know? It's like how the FBI has the entirety of the Unabomber shack in like a warehouse. Yeah. You know, I don't I, I don't want to touch it. It's pristine. It's in mint condition. So anyway, it's episode 480 of the podcast. Hello, everybody. If you haven't heard the big news here at the Pope on Film Studios, where we record in beautiful downtown sunny Kent, Ohio, we will sadly, tragically be ending this podcast in October, which will no doubt, no doubt, really upset our four fans. Yes. We are going to be so upset when they get out of the asylum. But we will be ending the podcast on its 10-year anniversary. We'll be wrapping up the big show with a whole damn decade of doing it. Yes. 10 freaking years of making way too much content for any one person to listen to Yeah. without losing their grip on reality. We created this podcast so thick like my lady parts, that the only acceptable way to really listen to it is to to listen to it in teams. Yeah. Of uh, no less than no less than four people watching, listening to different episodes at a time. The Pope on Film Podcast, bringing people together. You're welcome, America. Yes. Dare I say... You're welcome, the world, because we have huge Recep Evadik fans. Yes, we do. Here. And see, if you're just tuning and in. And there was hey, a time, there was a time when we were huge in Bulgaria. Yes. And so, uh, see, if you're just joining us, you have no idea who Recep Evadik is. He's a major name in Turkish comedy. So, really, the only way to properly listen to this podcast is to start at the beginning where our show was five seconds long and continue listening to the podcast throughout uh, the middle part where each episode was 30 hours long. Yes. And then get to this point so you can get all of our little jokes like Recep Evadik and uh, TV's Jesse. And Ray Milland horse erotica. It, the only way to hear yes. this podcast is to hear it from the beginning and then move your way through. So, Bonnie. Yeah. This is something this is something that I've been wanting to open the podcast with for quite some time. Also, um I'm not just saying this because freaking cat. I'm not just saying this because it's a quote from the greatest TV show of all time. 
time I think you should leave Robinson, but I am like the most you are lagging like hell I've ever been in my life. Normally I do like costume changes and stuff like that and I dress all sexy. This is my outfit. I'm not changing. Oh, no. oh no, what's the hell? Uh shit. Funny? Yeah. Okay, are you still there? I'm still here. You okay. you were you were lagging like like a, you were lagging like a lot there for a little while. No, we had no idea huh. what you okay. Said. But but we're good now. Yeah, we seem good okay. now. Okay, good. That was weird. What I'm saying is, I'm not changing my outfit. I'm tired. It's hot. I'm not changing my outfit. So I've been wanting to start the podcast like this for quite a while. A lot has happened in the ten years since we have started this podcast. Yes, we started recording in October of 2024 and 20. 20- of 2014 and we're ending it in october of 2024 but we started we started in october of 2014 and a lot of things happened in the year 2014 bunny oh oh, just in the 2014 i thought you were going for the span of time oh you're frozen up again i think or, or you're really, yeah, really, really concentrating. There you go. You woke up for a second. Uh, okay, good, good, good. Okay. Am, am I still good? Am I still good? You're, you're getting good. Am I funny? Huh? I'm you... getting good. Okay. Jeez Louise. Okay. Um. Okay. Well, we'll. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Let me send you. Let me send you. Drop out and let me send you another invitation. So I'm confused as to what else I can do to make this slower. Works. All right. We will be right back. Out. So in the meantime, how are you doing? Good. We need we, we need some filler here. Oh, we need some filler here. We're waiting yeah. for her to come back. I was, I was screaming. Yes. Little rock of our yes. Little but it was probably trademarked, huh? Uh, copyrighted? Oh, for Cop- sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I won't sing it anymore. Um, but I did watch the movies, and they were both really fun. Yeah. Yes. I enjoyed Good. them both. Roger Corman is an evil genius. Is an evil genius. Yes. And <coughs> and I believe everything Ed Wood wanted to be. Yeah. Yeah. Making well, money. We, we making will films. ask the Pope when she gets back. Yeah. Do you think she's going to come back? Oh. Here we are. Hmm. Hi. Hey. Hi. Hopefully that good? helps. Am I good? Yeah. You're good so you're far. Good? Yay. All right then. So, I can continue. Yes. Okay. 2014 is when we started this podcast, and oh goodness gracious, so many things have happened between then and now. 2014 was the year that the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie came out. Yes. And it was really fun to see, yet again, the typical uh, media response to the Guardians of the Galaxy. No one knows these superheroes. I didn't. Marvel with a huge gamble. Yeah. 
man, will this be a major failure for the MCU? I mean, they said that about Thor. They yeah. said that about Iron Man. And so it's always interesting to see. I mean, nowadays when they say that, it, it actually is true. But yeah, now right they're then, right. Yeah. yeah, now they're right. Uh, the first John Wick movie came out in 2014. Now they're on like... And they're doing spin-offs. Uh, the first Lego movie, I remember. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Gangnam Style was a big hit. That, uh, that was also the year that all of those celebs did that uh, celebrity selfie at the Oscars. And the Oscars that year was hosted by Ellen because she was still tolerable. Yeah. And so that's exciting. That was a long time ago. And then I was going to stop it right there. But I found two astounding things. Two absolutely bizarre batshit things that happened in 2014 that I have to mention. In fact, these either one of these would be an awesome... A uh, historic approximation if we were still doing that. Nowadays, I try my hardest to uh, make the show quick and easy to write. So, I have to mention these. In 2014, 7439289X, like X ray. Sorry, go ahead. What the? Are you doing like secret we, we, Russian codes? We what got a we got a call. It was the president. He wanted the launch code. So we have eh, we might be cutting oh, this show a little okay. on the short side, but go ahead. Okay. Uh, in twenty four since in prison, and he was all set to marry his very long-term girlfriend. I, yeah. I can't imagine that Charles Manson can get a uh, girlfriend in his neighborhood. But sadly, tragically, the wedding was canceled. And you wouldn't believe why, Bunny. You wouldn't believe it. Um, Charles Manson's 26-year-old bride-to-be, a woman named Afton E. Burton. Are you still hearing me? Yes. Funny. Yeah. Still okay. hearing you. Good, You're not good, moving good. so Did well. Did I but freeze up again? You. Oh, you've been freezing up a lot. Okay, good. We're just, well, we're just going to trudge through. Yeah, okay. Well, but you can still hear me? Yes. But you can still hear me? Yes. Okay, well then, I don't care if I'm freezing up. Okay, so uh, Char Charles Manson's wedding was canceled after it was learned that his 26-year-old bride-to-be, a woman named Afton Burton, so that upon his death, she could legally take possession of his corpse and turn his body into a tourist attraction, a la famed Western bandit Elmer fucking McCurdy. Really? Yes! The return of Elmer McCurdy. Yeah. Can you imagine uh, Charles Manson in a sequel to the Elmer McCurdy story? Isn't that crazy? I can yeah. see people traveling far and wide to check out Charles Manson's course. I, I, yeah, I remember that story, and I remember thinking, yeah, that was pretty smart of her. Fuck it. Yeah. Well, I mean, are, are we going to cry that she's like somehow ripping off or defaming Charles Manson? Yeah. How dare you attack Charles Manson? Like, how dare you try and take Charles Manson? Here's the sad part. So you're going to marry uh, Charles Manson because you know further down the line there's going to be a paycheck. I I'm good with that. Yeah, I'm fine with that, too. The sad part is, 
I know that m- most of America was finally hoping that Charles Manson could settle down and get his happily ever after. Yeah. But unfortunately, you know, dang, Shucky Darns. Looks like he won't be settling down after all. Okay, so that's the first and story. You know and now people are fucking nuts with Manson. Yes. And, and honestly, honestly, I, I had a realization. Like, if you go back, because, like, everybody had kind of their Manson phase, right? Mm-hmm. I'm sure you spent some at least a little time Googling Manson videos on YouTube. I mean, I you read the have. book. I read the book, Elter Skelter. If you listen to Charles Manson talk, which stupid people think is deep. <laughs> okay? And why yeah. Manson still has a cult following. You listen to Charles Manson talk, and I always found this fascinating of just how much fucking gibberish it is. Yeah. Charles Manson sounds exactly how Trump sounds now. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Bing bong boom. Yeah, it's just it's just gibberish and words that do not connect and do not mean anything that stupid people think is deep. The thing that kill the thing that 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 blows my mind is that Charles Manson just spent most of his life locked up in jail, and he didn't kill anybody. That finds I'm fascinated yeah. by that. Yeah. That it's like, oh, he's locked up because he told other people to kill. Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay. Charles Manson di- just didn't stab, didn't shoot, didn't torture anybody. No. Like at all. That's fascinating to me. That's fascinating to me. Okay. So that's the <laughs> first story Charles Manson and Elmer McCurdy. Here's the second story The Netherlands. Okay. You know the <coughs> Netherlands, Bunny? I have heard of them. Yes, it, it's the home of the Netherlandians. Yeah. In their city, Netherlands City. That, that's the capital of the Netherlands. So in 2014, the Netherlands proved that they're a million times better than America because they instituted a huge tax specifically targeting the ultra rich yeah can you imagine that that. in america it that's like a dream on par with in america taxing the rich is like a fantasy i mean you might as well wish that the lion the witch and the wardrobe was real yeah you know can you imagine can you believe how much better our country would be if we taxed the ultra wealthy instead of literally letting them control every facet of American life? Yes. It's fucked up. So but, twenty but points. We can't do anything about it because they literally control every aspect of American life. Yeah. See, and they that's make the, the laws problem. and that's yeah, why no. we can't do anything about them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's fucked up. So, 20 points to the Netherlandites. That's a boss move. So, they passed a new wealth tax in 2014. You won't believe the name. The name of the tax? Yes. It's a big, long Dutch name. And it's pronounced Dagobert Duck Tax. Okay. And they named this new tax Dagobert Duck Tax. Here's the thing. Dagobert yeah. is the Dutch name for fucking Scrooge McDuck. Oh! That is so fucking cool. It's the Scrooge McDuck tax? Yes! Oh! And it and it's all one word, Dagobert Duck Tax. Tax spelled T A K S. Dagobert Duck Tax. In 2014, the word Dagobert Duck Tax was like the Dutch 
word of the, of the year. Basically, the Dutch said, hey, if you're as rich as Scrooge McDuck, we're taking some of your money because it's fucked up that you have so much when there are homeless people in the Netherlands. And so that's what a good nation does. Yes. You know, I, I love the fact that there's a like a DuckTales tax, basically. I think that's awesome. Also in 2014, I was a sad, suicidal man who was back then as close as I've ever been to a divorce. Uh, and you to... were Jewish. And I was Jewish? You, you can't leave out. Oh, yes, yes, no. I was a Jewish man. I was really into uh, Tai Chi. Yeah. And scrapbooking. And scrapbooking. And primarily, you know, just getting out of my motorcycle, getting out of my hog, and just riding. You know? Yeah. Just me and the open road. Uh, it, it, it was amazing. So, to say this in a nice way, Natasha was spending a lot of time in another state, and I was spending a number of nights somewhere else. Yeah. I had a divorce lawyer, but I kept postponing the meeting with the divorce lawyer because I was still blindly holding out hope that uh, my wife and I could work things out. Yeah. Uh, and it's, you say, hey, here's my phone number. Call me up. Even though we had never spoken before. And you said, I found a real easy way to record a podcast. I'm recording like 800 of them. Yeah. And uh, how about we do one? I've got a great name. It's called The Pope on Film. And I remember thinking, that's a horrible fucking name. But okay. <laughs> it's not like we're going to be doing the show for 10 whole years. I'm sure it's going to be fine. And we didn't have the internet. So probably like the first year that I did the podcast, I would go to... Dwayne and Lauren's house and wheeze their juice Yeah, as far as the internet is concerned. I would be recording the podcast in like my brother-in-law's house uh, before he lost his mind. And they are so not together anymore. But by the time 2015 rolled around, my wife had an about face and so did I. Even there were times in 2014 when we hated each other and we were going to break up and we talked about like like which kid would want to go where and it was pretty dark but yeah we we were still friends and 2015 you know my wife and I turned things around and we we took each other seriously and we rebuilt our relationship and eventually my wife shockingly still can't believe this but my wife said I love you honey <clears throat> how about one more kid yeah. and boom we had Eleanor and Eleanor will be turning eight years old tomorrow this podcast is older than my youngest child yes I find that Fascinating. Isn't that crazy, Bonnie? Yes. Did you hear that? That's amazing. Yeah. It's impressive that, you know, we went 10 years and somehow Maxwell and Eleanor did not score a spin off. Yes. But there were a few spin offs. Uh, uh, there was uh, the break time hijinks with Jeannie and. Q. Yes. And Q's break time hijinks. And I think Day and Destiny had a show for like a like a, a hot minute. second. Yeah. A New York minute. Destiny has since blocked me on Facebook. Not that I'm upset by that at all. And my wife did an episode an episode of her own. Not the full episode. I did like the intro and the uh, historic approximations, but she did the main movie at the end. It was Wally. Yeah. The Wally episode. My wife took 
that episode way more seriously than I thought she would. That episode was 87 hours. Yes, it was. It was incredible. My wife had like eight pages of notes. The episode was literally, I would say, about five hours long. It was intense. Then uh, other things that happened it, during the 10 years, uh, I was fired from uh, the from Barnes & Noble after 18 years because in 2018, in a desperate attempt to stay in business, they fired 1,800 full-time employees, including me. I was immediately picked up by a nonprofit in Norman, Oklahoma called LoveWorks Leadership. And the founder of LoveWorks and I created a free monthly kids story time called Raising Little Leaders. And it was centered around me reading stories. And it was a lot of fun. And at the exact three-year anniversary of me doing one to two story times a month for LoveWorks, yeah. the moment I started transitioning and posting pictures of myself in a dress, suddenly this nonprofit was like, oh, you know what? Uh, we have budget issues, and I was let go. And so I didn't perform for about two years. And then I saw in 2020 that there were auditions for this big three-day pride festival in downtown Oklahoma City and I auditioned and I've been performing since then again which has been really nice here's the thing I did the math and I find this absolutely fascinating all of last year I did seven performances throughout the entirety of the year yeah this year, so far, I have done 21 performances. Nice. 10 in the morning. Including 10, including 8 just this month. My 8th is going to be this Saturday on the main stage of uh, the three-day Oklahoma City Pride Festival. Last year, they put me on Sunday, and that's the day when they put people... I, I'm, I'm just using my own words here, but it seems as if Sunday is where they put the people where they're not sure if it's going to be a big hit. And so it was me and a ballet company and a, like, so, cis at rock band, as far so as I can tell. So you were, you were a February movie. Yes, very much so. But this year, they put me in on the main stage on Saturday, which is, there's going to be like 800, 900, I don't know, 1,000 people there. And they have a bunch of big names that are performing that Saturday night. But my hour-long, they gave me a half hour last year, my hour-long set will be between 3.30 and 4.30, which will be like the peak time when people are coming in. And it's a big deal, and it's this Saturday, and I'm really excited. We have been through a lot. Yes. In this podcast. And of course, all the things that you have gone through in the past 10 years, Bonnie. Uh, let's see. You finally got clean. Am I locking up again? You Hear are locking all? up again. You're, you're over it. Okay. Okay, so sick of this. I don't know what the problem is. I might have to move into my wife's room for this. I can be closer to the internet. But we have been through a lot in these past nine and, let's say, two-thirds years. And now we're ending it. And the thing that I will miss the most about the Pope on Film podcast, besides the groupies, of course. Yeah. Because we get so many Pope on Film groupies that are just throwing themselves all over. Us. And I'm like, hey, Liam Hemsworth, no. I'm holding out for Chris. You know? Yeah. So, um, the thing I'll miss the most is just having a regularly, regularly date sketching stupid with you, Bunny. Yes. 
I have no problem saying this, Bunny. I love you. You, uh, these past 10 years, you've been more of my father than my father had been my father. And you've been more of my brother than my actual horrible, racist, drunken, You done you done locked up real good this time. You broke him. Woman beating brother. You are my dad and my brother and a part of my legit family, and I love you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you can you hear me? I can hear you now. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. I got him crying over. Uh, okay are you crying well because like it it you locked hard okay yeah Where what was the was, last thing you heard you were completely frozen well apparently i heard everything because as soon as you unlocked i got everything that you had said while you were locked really wow. speeded up okay wow okay well, so that's the exactly Alvin how I the planned chipmunk it. version of it, I kind of heard. Nice. Nice. Okay. Well, that was my plan this whole time, was to Alvin and the chipmunk my feelings for you. Yes. So that's good. That's what I planned. So uh, I love you, Bunny. And uh, 10 years. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. 10 years. I have mapped out our summer, our entire summer, and the movies that we will be doing. Okay. We will be ending our summer of Corman with possibly the greatest double feature of all time. Okay. The Godfather Part 2 and Looney Tunes back in action. Uh-oh. <laughs> Both featuring... Rob Roger Corman. What a great double feature. Finally, Looney Tunes and the Corleone family together. Well, but we're still going to be doing Santa Claus and the Ice Cream Bunny, aren't yes. we? Yes, I would like to do that. And we could have a couple of other specials. We could kick that idea around, like maybe an Academy Awards yeah. special show or something like that things of that nature yeah that'd be fun something that we just do yeah. from time then, to time and then for yeah and then i figure in like september no more i'll than pick four. the movies in a, <laughs> yeah yeah in september i'll pick the movie and then in october you can pick the movies i you can pick whatever you want but for my last month september I am going to pick movies that we've done in the past that I feel are important. Okay. I can't promise that I won't pick cats. Uh-oh. I'm just saying it's on the table. I'm not saying all we're right, going to right. do it. The only uh, movie the only movie that I'm sure we're going to do is The Giant Claw. Beyond uh, it, that, anything else is up in the uh, uh, is in the cards. I'll see your cats and raise you speed racer. Ooh, well, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's a decent movie. But uh, I believe that's it for our opening this week. The Betty White Memorial Podcast segment brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. Download today, a.k.a. Jeff. Uh, so what I think that we should do is we should take a break. Show we some videos and stuff like that. And then, after that, we can get to our double feature, Little Shop of Horrors and the Pit and the Pendulum. Yeah. We've gotten into price territory. Oh, I love it. Yes. Which I am very excited about. I love it. Vincent Price always seemed to me to be the gayest 
straight man I've ever met. Uh, yeah, until George Hamilton took his crown. Because, but yeah, from what I, I can would tell, go with that. Yeah, but the what from what I, yeah, but like he's just this spooky, effeminate British man who loves his wife and really enjoys cooking, and it's just. Yes. Mm, I can see a little bit of the gayness, but but apparently he's he was straight. So we we're, we're just gonna Liberace that one, okay? Yeah, we're, yeah. we're just gonna no, yeah. he's just flamboyant. Yeah. So uh, so maybe we should take a break. Should we take a break? We should take a break. Okay, I concur. We will be right back with more of the Pope on Phil after this. Do 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 and break. 